athleisure wear, athleisure. <sighs> Hi, hello. I'm gonna be honest. I don't want to go into the city today. It is gonna be so hot, like 93 degrees. <sighs> but we're going. We're going. Blech. This is a fit for today. Yeah, this mint green, very thin shirt, white shirt underneath, common ground, sunglasses, and then 51% jeans because it's got the the ventilation. Okay, bag of the day. I haven't brought this baby out in a long while, but we got we got the the Peggy Goo tote. I go. She a cutie. I think um I think this will this will be it. Do we like that? Yeah. Okay. Well, before I'm extremely late, let's go. <laughs>
Hi, hello. Welcome to another very special vlog. This is, this is the fraud vlog. The fraud vlog. Zadie Smith, the fraud. We are reading this historical novel by Zadie Smith. I'm gonna be real honest with y'all. Why did I think <laughs> that picking up a historical novel would be fun? I'm gonna be real honest. I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan of historical novels. Not a big fan of history. Kind of, um, especially during this time period. I will let you know though, I'm at 175 and foreshadowing might be a DNF. I'm just, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not having a good time. It just isn't worth the struggle. There are some really interesting bits of where Charles Dickens comes in and you know, meddles with the story and, but overall, just like, I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. The only person I really care about is perhaps Eliza. Um, she's sort of the female protagonist in this like very, very layered, layered novel of what truth means. What does truth mean in fiction? What does truth mean in the newspaper? What does truth mean while we're creating it? and uh, what to do with it. But Eliza is sort of the central female character and she has a love interest with a married man and another. And uh, yeah, I just find her story, I guess because it drives the plot the most. Um, but other than that, <laughs> I don't care. I really don't. I'm gonna read a few pages today, hopefully hit 200, maybe 250 and uh, I'll decide after that. It's a lot. This is a lot. I think it will require two reads. Like it, it's a lot to pick up in even one reading. What helps is that the chapters are incredibly short so it feels like you're moving quickly through it. And I think she did that with great cause because uh, she knew this would be quite sluggish but I'm gonna be real honest. This is my first Zadie Smith and I think I picked up the wrong Zadie Smith. I should just move to white teeth, shouldn't I? But yeah, it's a very complex, uh, takes place in Victorian London, uh, while also in Jamaica as well. Yeah, th those are the updates. Yesterday was extremely hot. Do we want a little, little unboxing? I'll show you what I got, cause I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, so let me show you. Picked up a little something something from Rest and Recreation local Korean brand. I want to say not as basic as Sporty and Rich, but uh, there's some fun elements to its athleisure. Athleisure wear? Athleisure. Athleisure wear. Yeah, so let me show you. This is a jersey. I picked up a jersey. I just find that wearing jerseys in summer is just like really nice. Really nice. And great to go clubbing in. Let me show you. But yes, I think you saw in the footage, I was deciding between brown or black. I decided to go with the black. There's the logo, Rest and Recreation. And I like them a lot because they it looks like a Courage knockoff, which is cute. And then we have these off-white stripe details here. So very excited to go clubbing in this. Isn't this great content? <laughs> Fashion haul and Zadie Smith the Fraud. I also went to the new nonfiction store in Shinsadong. They opened up a new location, so I decided to visit the store. And they they put it in this lovely little tote. It's a nice cute tote. And I was running out of my favorite cologne, so I decided to do do a little restock. And my light just went out, so bear with me. My favorite, and I loved it last summer. Um, it's for rest. Just has this very nice Hinoki Yuzu scent to it that just screams summer. They were doing a little special thing where you can get your name engraved on the bottle. So I don't know if that'll show up, but that didn't show up. <laughs> but my, my name's there. It's got my name. I don't know if that's corny or not, but it's cute. It's cute. I got my name on a little, little perfume bottle because uh, we love capitalism. And then, yeah, that was pretty much it. Saw some people, had some coffee, maybe too much coffee.
food. And then, yeah, sort of kept it chill because um, it's too hot. It's too hot and I don't even want to step outside, but I should because I know if I stay in here, I won't do much reading and I won't know how I feel about this. So we're, we're going to step outside, read a bit of the fraud. Stay tuned. y'all. We've got the fraud, Zadie Smith, right? This is this is what this vlog's about. I come with sad news. Um, I, I really regret to inform you that this, this is gonna be a DNF for me. <laughs> Which is really dumb, given that like I'm 150 pages of fi finishing, but I'm gonna be honest, I... something just occurred in me where I was reading and every time I left the book, I just realized that uh, I was just reading it. There wasn't anything else going on. There wasn't interest. There wasn't devotion. There wasn't uh, any of these other attachments that I usually have with literature. That may be because I'm not a fan of historical fiction to Victorian era. Not, not a fan either. But sadly gonna be a dnf for me because i realized I, I wasn't enjoying my experience with this book but i'll leave you with some pros and cons zadie smith is an incredible writer i was very impressed with the amount of research that she put forth with this i very much enjoyed the short chapters how it mimics sort of victorian life another time where things happened um, narrative structures then also were very, uh, was very much shown to us. You know, it's that whole thing, show, don't tell, but I think the idea of the novel is, is so interesting. And she also plays with the idea of story and how story can be told. Um, through the trial, there are moments of dialogue where it's transcripts. I also just got done with this incredible, incredible dream sequence it's it's quite quite beautiful it's incredible just like its construction and I, I won't spoil it for you but it it's just fabulously done and so uh major props to zadie smith she's incredible an incredible writer but i think here comes the cons i think she was way too invested in her research to really pull off any strong emotional developments for the characters, minus Eliza. I really, really enjoyed Eliza as a character. I think there are just some emotional swells, little dramas, and just the way that thinks over a lot of things in terms of recounting history, creating truth for herself. And because of that, because of the research, lack of emotional attachment to the characters, this is also, what feels like three separate novels because there are three different things going on and I think 
this would have been better if they were all separate in a way. Sort of like a trilogy of novellas, I think, would have been much stronger than something quite clunky like this. And that also gives in to sort of the scatterbrain attachment to the narratives as well. Ultimately, I just wasn't having the best time with this. But if you are a fan of the Victorian era, and if you enjoy historical fiction, this 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 has your name all over it. I, I think you'll get a kick out of this, but sadly, just just isn't doing it for me. But since we're here, I'll leave you with this quote because what this book did make me think about a lot was as much as I detest history and like historical novels, which is not my jam, I, I did think about history and the ways in which we tell it, the ways in which we learn about it, and the ways in which we mull it into our own truths and then make it a part of us and speak of it as truth. There's a quote here. One lifetime was not enough to understand a people and the words they used and the way they thought and lived. And yeah, just thinking about it, like for Smith to think of history and to create it in three separate, three different narratives and mushed it all together in 450 something pages. What is truth? What is history? Can you do it justice by cramming it in a certain number of words, a word count, a certain number of pages? Can it be respectfully done even with the immense research? Does it need pictures? Do I require the pictures? You know, when we think of history books, like, those pictures speak a thousand words, but like, honestly, what is the absence of history, you know? The narratives that are not told, and I think that's also quite quite strong and apparent in theme here as well. Uh, the character set in Jamaica um, during that time, and hearing their narratives, their dreams and desires, their ideas of freedom, and it's really compelling in themes, but in the structure construction of a novel, this was quite flat for me, unfortunately. Zadie Smith, she's got, she's got the good ideas, big brain, big brain energy, but lack of emotional attachment for me, sadly. And yes, declaring it now as a DNF, sadly. I hope I didn't scare you away from reading it. I think Perhaps it's something worth reading. I hope if you do pick it up, you find value in it. As I have, I, I like I, I found some value in it in terms of themes, but for Victorian era fans out there, <laughs> I, hope, I hope you get a kick out of it. I hope you do, Zadie Smith fans. I, I hope you get a kick out of this as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this vlog and let me know if you end up picking this up, uh, come back to the vlog, let me know your thoughts, turn me around in terms of Victorian literature. If there is Victorian literature that you wreck for non-Victorian fans, let a boy know. I'd, I'd like to be, I'd like to be influenced. I'd like to change my mind, change my perspective, change my tastes. Would be open to try and, trying out new narratives. Okay, as always, be well, do good work keep in touch.